So I've been wanting to do this for Harry for the last year now. Finally, the time has come where we have enough time to just relax and actually do what I've been wanting to do. And I've decided that I wanted to book a little weekend getaway at this detox cabin, basically in the middle of nowhere. And it's a little place that you can go and stay and switch off from everything in life and just focus on yourself, us and our dogs and just completely have a refresh for our mental health and just feel a lot better. And the reason why I've wanted to book this for Harry for the last year is because he's been going through a lot mentally his whole entire life. For the last five years since I've known Harry, he's been battling with something really, really hard in his head and he's been struggling a lot mentally and I feel like he's needed this break away to kind of just reset and have some time to reflect on his mental health and he did mention to me that if we were to go somewhere like this where he can completely shut off from everything and focus on his mental health he did want to sit down and talk to you guys and completely open up about everything that he's been going through for his whole entire life and he's been going through a lot and he basically hasn't ever spoken about this online before he hasn't even spoken about this to a lot of close people in his life so let alone recording this and speaking to you guys about it but I know for a fact that he wants to do it to open up and spread like a positive message to help anyone else that's going through something similar to him and I feel like it's going to be the most perfect place for him to just switch off and talk about everything that's been going on in his head for his entire life. Are you scared? I am. I actually don't know what to do. <laughs> Why is this happening? We have ourselves a little bit of a dilemma, guys, because we've freaked ourselves out big time. And we never really get freaked out, but we've really freaked ourselves out. We are currently staying in a detox cabin in Wales. We've just run into a little problem and it's really scared us. Yeah, and we don't know if we're overreacting, but like, basically this cabin comes fully equipped with everything like it comes equipped with everything to cook with pots pans there's something in this cabin right now that is meant to be here but it's not you've got all the all the stuff up here you've got all the plates everything we've just eaten dinner there and in this drawer you're supposed to have the main knife like the main chef's knife like the huge knife that you cook you you cut meat you do everything with you're meant to have your two cutlery knives which we don't have and a smaller knife as well none of the knives are in this cabin like they, they're all taken away like there's no knives in this drawer whatsoever like there's no knives we've got we've got spoons and spoons are the only thing we have apart from this stuff that you cook with the fact that we're here and the people that own this have said that there should be knives is just creeping us out because we're like overthinking that people were hit that were here last have like taken the knives and we're in the middle of nowhere and it's just like worrying it's us. so weird and we're debating right now to stay here because we've come to this detox cabin to have a detox because of I something that stress. yeah because of something that i was going to talk about to you guys and i still am going to talk about this whole place is meant to be a mental health reset and now it's turned into a horror film. A horror film. <laughs> no, but are we overreacting? That's the thing. Like, I don't think we are. Is some has someone just stolen them because they they wanted some they want to upgrade their cutlery or is it just a bit But why would they not take the spoons? Why would they not take everything? No, this is the thing. Is it just a bit weird that they've taken every sharp utensil in the kitchen apart from And we're in the middle of nowhere. The middle of nowhere. There is nowhere around us. I wish we could show you guys, but it's actually, it's pitch black right now. We've had got like hikes planned and everything to like go, because we've got the dogs with us and everything. And it's annoying me because we're filming this video for you guys. And this was meant to be part of the video. And now it's turned into some horror film where there's no knives. There's, there's no knives. There's meant to be five knives in there and there's no knives. Why would someone take the knives? We're in the middle of nowhere. What if the last people came here and they took it and they had some weird plan and they wanted to like, I don't know, I don't like it. Someone would come here and they'd see there's no knives and they'd be like, oh, it's fine. And they wouldn't see the bigger picture. What if something did happen, you know? And we could just be at home. We, we live an hour and a half right now. I don't know. It does seem like, like a scene from a horror film. It does. It's nice in the day, but not at night. Yeah, this is what's creeping me out. The decision has been made. We've packed our bags. We're going We're home. Clearing out. But we can't go home before we wash up. We've got to be respectful. Yeah, we need to clear everything up. <laughs> Tell me what you just said. They just packed everything into the car. I've just got a text from them saying, hey again guys, just want to triple check that you found the drawer inside the top drawer. It pulls out separately. We've just packed all of our bags in the car. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Because if this is in there, I'm going to be so pissed right now. <gasps> no! 
What are we doing? Why did I not think about that? Let's oh look. my god, we're such Would idiots. Who would think to do that? You can't even get your fingers in it there. It does say cutlery though on it. Yeah, but it looks <laughs> like it's part. Oh my god. So we just had all that panic over nothing. Do we stay or do we go? I don't know. Do you want to stay? Is your call? Like, <laughs> I think we should stay as well. Oh, this is so annoying. They're all there. Four knives, everything. Oh, we're so stupid. Hey, gorgeous. You gonna help me talk? You gonna help me? <laughs> well, I never thought I'd be talking about this, ever. I don't know why, I just thought that no one would ever wanna hear it or there's no reason for me to talk about it. And it hit me the other day that I was like, you know what, maybe I should talk about this because the only way we can physically help someone else is by telling our own story. And that's how I feel every single time I hear somebody talk about what I go through or just somebody speaking about their own journey. It helps me, you know? And I feel like I might be able to help a few of you watching this video, well, hopefully, I hope I can. Even even if it's not the same thing that I go through, just anything mental health related, I really feel like this video might help a lot of you out. Do you struggle with mental health? Does that face look like it struggles with mental health? I don't think it does. <laughs> I wish I could have your head. I wish everybody could have your head. But before I explain what it is that I go through, I just want everyone to bear in mind that we all have a brain. Like we all have a brain, but it's not the same brain. We're not wired the same. We're all completely different. We all struggle with different different things and communicate differently. We all have a different brain basically. And mine is a very confused brain. It's a brain that doesn't really understand the difference between some things and it also can't figure out the difference between negativity and positivity. I struggle with something called OCD. It's called an obsessive compulsive disorder. And I know as soon as someone hears the word OCD, they automatically think, oh, so you, you're, you're clean, you're tidy. Yes, that is OCD. That's a very small percentage of what it is. And what I struggle with and what I've struggled with for the past 17 years, and I really hope that you guys can relate to this. And I hope I see so many comments relating to this. And I hear so many of your guys' stories as well, because it helps me as much as I'm trying to help you guys that helps me as well. For the past 17 years, I've struggled with doing something called OCD and it means that I have a very negative brain. I'm always thinking about negative stuff. I don't want to trigger anybody. I, I really don't want to trigger anyone because I know how that would feel. So I'm not going to like specify things. There's certain things in life that really trigger me and a lot of it comes down to illness. Anything regarding that, I get extremely triggered and this affects me most days. I can't, I sometimes can't even get out of bed. I can't even do simple tasks that most people could do. I, I couldn't, I can't do it. It's hard. I'll be honest, it's really hard. And I've, I've only actually met three people with this thing that I go through, they've all had the same story as, as I have. They've all had a different reason as to why they have it, but they all have the same story as to why they have it. But they all have a different story as to why they got it. Just bear with me, because I'm gonna, I'm gonna get to more, I'm gonna explain more when the video carries on. I'm gonna explain more about what it is and what I struggle with. In short terms, the reason I have it is because it was a form of anxiety that I coped with at a young age. At a young age, I, I was very stressed. I was always anxious. I was always nervous. I had, no co I had zero confidence, guys. I, like This, to me, doing YouTube was like, no. It was like, that was the last thing I ever imagined myself doing, but it was the one thing I always dreamed of doing. I was so different to all my friends when I grew up. Like I was like, I was just very in my own head and I couldn't do things normal. I couldn't be like a normal kid. Just do, just do normal kid things without having this thing in my head that was always negative. My brain can't understand that negative thoughts are not gonna come true. My brain chooses to believe that everything that's negative is gonna come true. I know that sounds crazy, and I know the, probably the first thought that's come to your head, because it's come to many people's head that I've spoken to, which is fine, is just don't worry about it. Just don't think about it. If you've got a negative thought, don't worry about it. And I'm like, wow, I wish it could be that easy, because if it was, these last 20 years would have been really flipping easy for me, and they haven't. <laughs> but yeah, my brain can't understand that negative thoughts are not gonna come true. My brain chooses to believe that they are gonna come true. And this all comes down to events that have happened in my life, losing people, family. I'm not gonna go into detail about it, but there's certain things that have happened with losing certain people that have triggered me so much. I, I now went from this kid that had severe anxiety to an adult who has severe health anxiety. I also want you guys to bear in mind what I said earlier. This, what I'm doing right now, YouTube, was the last thing I ever imagined myself doing but it's the number one thing I always dreamed of doing and it come true so I just want that to inspire hopefully inspire you guys that if you are going through something it doesn't mean you can't achieve stuff it doesn't mean you can't reach that goal just because you you're, you suffer with mental health or you're going through something because it's how your perception is on stuff really changes everything when I was a kid and I used to work in like pot washing and I used to work I don't know in cinemas and stuff like that I was like do you know what I just want to be behind closed doors I always said to my mom and dad as well I was always like I want to work in Argos it's all I want to do. I want to work in Argos because I'm behind closed doors. No one can see me. I just go and get the stuff. I bring it out and I go back in my room. Now, I have 6 million followers <laughs> on TikTok and YouTube with my fiance that you guys 
watch every single day, which is the biggest blessing I, could, I, I will ever be able to explain, other than Rosie and other than our dogs. It is the biggest blessing that has ever happened and it ever will happen because it was my biggest dream. What I go through got so bad to the point where my dad actually thought I had Tourette's. As a kid, I would be in school, I'd be with my friends and I would literally be jumping up and down, tapping my head, shaking my head, doing things with my hands. It was scary. It was really scary. I was like doing things because I was so anxious all the time that it was my coping mechanism. It got to a point where my dad had no idea what was going on. He was like, what the hell? is my kid doing? Why is he jumping up and down? Why is he shaking his head around? How, how has he got all this energy and he, but he looks unhappy? Like, why is he so stressed all the time? It was because of my anxiety in my head, my OCD. My, I, I, my brain used to speak to me and tell me to do things like jump up and down because if you do that, this bad thing you're thinking about won't happen. I used to think if my mum dies or my dad dies, I know, I'll jump up and down six times and it won't happen. And I still am doing that to this day, but I'm not jumping up and down. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not doing that. I stopped doing all of that when I was like 15. I don't jump up and down anymore. Um, <laughs> I laughed because it was just, it was, it was so random back when I was younger. But my dad, it got to a point with my dad where he, he had to film me doing it without me knowing because he got so scared and he wanted to get in touch with a therapist for me. And this therapist was asking him questions like, what does your son go through? And my dad was like, I don't know. I don't know what he goes through. So he had to record me. And one day he recorded me. I didn't know he recorded me. And it's absolutely fine that he recorded me because he got me, he got me my first therapy session, which was awesome because that guy was an American guy and he made me realize what I had <laughs> and he made me realize that I had OCD and back when I was younger and I was having therapy and I realized what it was I stopped having therapy and the years go on and on and on and I stopped doing my habits that's what I, I've always called them my habits my ticks I always I stopped jumping up and down I stopped doing things with my hands I stopped flickering my eyes I used to flick my eyes so much and I'd get constant headaches I had to before I go to bed I used to have to chuck my cushions off of my bed onto the floor and if it didn't land in the exact spot that my brain told me it needed to land I'd have to go and do it again and sometimes I'd be there for like two hours and my parents would be like what is what is he doing why is he up there two hours later still moving around because I had to chuck the pillow and I just most nights I would just cry my eyes out because I just I had this thing in my head that was telling me to do stuff and it just didn't get easier I could I couldn't I had to obey it I, I was like I was obeying something that was taking control of my head and it was like half of my head was an angel and it was this beautiful life the other half was a devil and it was like the angel would be like it's okay you can do it if you don't put that thing down six times nothing bad will happen but then the devil will go but what if it does what if it does happen i would obey that side way more because that's way scarier and still to this day it's still a thing i struggle with i'm having um regular sessions with my therapist life coach he's incredible he's helped me out so much where i'm at right now is i am still struggling with my head i'm still struggling with the negative thoughts now i'm older and i'm more mature I seem to understand it more and I seem to understand that I've gotten more knowledgeable about my head, I, I understand the brain more, I understand how people are wired differently, that helps me a lot and I also don't want people to think that having this OCD or mental health makes you a crazy person because what I go through is actually, I would say one of the main reasons why I now have 6 million followers and why I can now do YouTube for a job and why I met Rosie and it, because it's helped me so much in life but it's like 50-50, it's like I've had really bad times and really good times. But majority have been bad times. One thing I used to say to my therapist is, I just want to get rid of it. I just want to get rid of my negative thoughts. And this really helped me out. He said, you're never going to get rid of it. And I was like, what? Like, I, I want to get rid of it. Like, what do you mean I can't get rid of it? And he was like, you can't get rid of it. It's, it's part of you, that's you. You just have to maintain it. So you're never going to get rid of it, but you'll get control of it. I feel a million times better. And it was the best thing I ever did getting therapy because having someone there talk to you that understands you and has gone through the same thing or something similar is the most refreshing thing for anybody that's gone through any mental health condition because you can talk to anyone about it. you can talk to your friends your family and they'll go okay yeah I sometimes do that too and you're like it's not the same okay it's not the same I can't stress how important it is to get a therapist because I heard this for so many years and I was like no no one's gonna help me no one's gonna understand me a therapist does understand you I never thought I'd ever meet anyone like Rosie that would understand me and get me and understand everything I go through but I did and Rosie is far from any bet any therapist I could ever get she is the best person in this world I'm spending the rest of my life with her she understands me she gets me she helps me we've both helped each other out so much I mean even when she had her psoriasis for three years and covered her whole body the reason we made that documentary was because we wanted to help you guys because we know how much it means to have help. We've both given each other that help that we both need over the past five years of us being together. And I 
cherish that so much. I can't explain how much she's helped me. Just just knowing that I have somebody in my life and she understands me and she's my soulmate and she gets me and helps me is more than I could ever ask for. And I wouldn't be able to be this healthy person I am today if it wasn't for her help because I couldn't do this by myself. I talk myself into stuff and believe it's true and I just have this negative mind all the time. Without her helping me for the past five years, I don't think I'd be this person I am today. Now, I don't, I, I don't know how much I've explained it and I hope you guys understand. I just want this to be a lesson to anyone out there who is going through any mental health, whether it is OCD, whether it's depression, whatever you, whatever you go through, there is always a light at the end of the tunnel. And I know people always say that and you're like, yeah, well, it's easier said than done, but there is. And I promise you, if you get therapy and you start telling your brain how you wanna live your life, which is easier said than done, trust me, I'm still doing it right now. Once you get in control of yourself and you start training yourself, you're gonna be unstoppable. Guys, I'm gonna leave you on that because I can't, I don't wanna give you guys too much advice because I'm still struggling myself. And this video was to explain what I go through. And I really hope that some of you guys will DM me and I can help a few of you out. Whatever it may be to help a few of you out, please message me because I know what it's like to be in a position where no one understands you and you just want some help and you just want someone to understand you. And I hope that I can be that guidance for you guys because because I never had that. But yeah, thank you guys for listening to this story. And I just remember, we're in this together. You got my back, I got your back. We're gonna get through this. I know we are. But I love you guys so much and I'll catch you in another video. You gonna say bye? This is how you get Poppy to bark every time, ready? What's that? What's that? What's that? You're so cute. <laughs> Peace.